Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. It's another repi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you for another historic time machine episode. You got to test the very deep, darkest memories of your mind because we are looking at the best bot lane duos of all time. This isn't just a standout AD carry or a standout support. It's the greater powers that be when you look at the partnership that is AD carry support. Out of doing all the type of top, top lists and everything else, this one stands special to me because it is that combination of the roles. It is a different equation, a different level that you can max it all out and it equals out to these amazing duos that we see change the game, change the fortunes of these teams around the world. Love looking at these bot lane duos, the synergies they bring, the special sauce. That's what it's all about here. And sorry, Reckless and Hill is saying, Perks and Mickey, Afro and Doublelift. No Western squads on the list. Too many good Eastern duos that we've had over the years for any of these Western guys to be cracking into this list. We got seven bot lanes to look at, and we start with one of the OG god bot lanes of the LPL when Deft transitioned over to EDG and was paired up alongside Mako. They ran the LPL bottom lane for basically two full years. When you think of the LPL ADCs, the climate that we have now in the LPL and how it has scaled, you can thank a player like Deft and his presence in that league and what it brought. Combine him with, of course, the now now removed from EDG, Mr. Mako, but was the long-standing support for the organization. This was that bot lane threat, that duo that just pressured you relentlessly in the LPL in the early days. It was the perfect combo of Deft, especially in 2015 to 2017, was the mechanical god playmaker AD carry, and Mako was the mastermind that controlled the game, basically from his rookie split. You looked at him as a shot caller and guy who had a presence all over the map, and they were absolutely the two key cogs for this sort of EDG dynasty in the LPL uh, from 2015 to 2017. It was a situation where Mako so often would set them up and Deft is the one knocking them down, picking up those kills, picking up that damage scaling later on. That was the key for EDG. It was no secret around what they had. Sure, you did have, you know, a talented rest of the team around them. You had Scout there as well, these type of things. But it really is all about what was going down in that bottom lane, how they changed the fortunes of what really needed to be that expectation in the LPL in order to compete, in order to thrust yourself along the likes of the Uzis in the world and what they could do down in the bottom lane. Having a duo of Deft and Mako was certainly the answer for EDG. And that 2015-2016, you know, 2015 was kind of the worst year for Uzi. He had the OMG thing. So the bot lane was very much Deft and Mako at the very tippity top for that 15-16. Obviously went very separate career paths after that. Deft hop into multiple teams afterwards. Mako staying strong with EDG for like eight, nine years before he finally ended up leaving the organization he'd been with for his entire career. Number six, bot laner. Bot lane and support, excuse me. Always giving credits to the AD carries. This was a rookie and a role swap that completely changed the trajectory of an organization because Samsung Galaxy, before Core JJ and Ruler came, they were all over the place after the Samsung Blue and White Dynasties. 2015 was a mess, but this bot lane is what got the org back on track. And right now, here we might be telling you there's no rush hour, there's no perks in Mickey, but here's your Western dosage, the Dignitas mouse pad coming on through <laughs> in this era of Core JJ's LCK, LCK career. Yes, my man, the all time, turn it all the way back in the clock, time in the clock to see him on Dignitas. Now go over to the era of T1 dominance in the LCK. No, not this year. We're rewinding it all the way back to the original dynasty of T1 where they are right in the midst of going for that third straight world championship, dominating the LCK. The only team 
that ever provided them that challenge, always would rise up and be that second best, was this Samsung Galaxy squad. And you do have to pay attention to Ruler and Core JJ because they were major reasons why you even got to contend at that type of point in the bot lanes that they went against at the peak in the LCK. This is certainly a duo that should not be looked down upon. And I think we forget that Ruler, that 2016 Worlds, this dude's a rookie. And they're going all the way to the finals and he had no business playing as aggressive as he did. He did not look like a rookie at all. Obviously never looked back from that play style years and years later. And he was a tricky one to do on this list because obviously any type of AD carry ranking ruler has to be on the list. But which support are you throwing him with? Him and Missing haven't played enough games together, even though they looked so good on JDG in their first year. You're not putting life or Lahans, there wasn't enough. It has to be core JJ, even though 2018 was not quite to the same level. They had that terrible world. But during the LCK, they were still a dominant bot lane, even when KSV or Gen G wasn't looking great. You got to think about what you're going up against. The Praise and the Gorillas, Bang and Wolf, Dynasty bot lane duos in the LCK. And time after time, even in that stretch, at the beginning all the way to the end of their run together on Gen G, Core JJ and Ruler able to stand up to those tests, able to best them at certain times. This is certainly one where you look at the stack, the strength of that competition at the time, and where they were able to challenge them. And ultimately, Get that success in 2017 at the World Finals. Gotta be throwing Core JJ and Ruler's time together up on a list like this. Now we gotta give a little memory to the youngins for the number five bot lane on this one because we are going back 2014. We're talking Imp and Mata. And even though this is a contentious one when you get all to all time rankings because they didn't have the time together as much as some of these other bot lanes that we're gonna talk about, but 2014 as a whole year, they were so unbelievably dominant and there was no question who the best bot lane in the world at the time was. And that world championship still to this day might be the most dominant bot lane run that two players have had through a whole tournament. Yes, it's time for the boomers to stand and rise and celebrate our favorite bot lane looking back through at the eras, Imp and Mata, legends in the game, legends themselves and legends together for that 2014 run to the World Finals, the championship for Samsung Galaxy White. Got to give that quick little bias shout out to your boy Mata and say that, that he's got, without a question in my mind, the best support world skin right there with that Samsung Galaxy White threshing. Not a bad look on the Twitch either, I'll say, before that squad loving those skins and yes, those world championship skins, world champions earned in 2014. You go back, you can even dial it back. I'll allow it this time to look at the down year of 2013, the failure of that organization, the rebound, the success of 2014, and the trajectory that that set bot lane duos, the synergy that they could achieve together. What type of power, if you really invested in them, that I think is one of the key differences and where we set off into the rest of this list. And because 2014 was still so early in the competitive scene for League of Legends, it truly felt like this bot lane was a couple of years ahead of its time. As, as the level of play grew over the next couple of seasons, you know, the base level that everyone was playing at obviously gets exponentially higher when you have gold yellow Lee Sins doing crazy insect kicks, which would have been unheard of in 2014. But these guys really felt like they were ahead of their time and it took a while for everybody to be catching up to them. Eventually, they did, but 2014, nah, nobody was a match. The only time they're dropping games is when they were trolling, basically, are the two games that they dropped at that World Championship and they ran through Imp and Mada in that bottom lane. Number four is one we're very familiar with and when you look at the iconic career for Uzi, it's easy to pick. The standout support that he had all along the way, of course, it is Ming. Protect the puppy, VIP president. That's what we're always talking about with Uzi, but we forget that the head bodyguard, the leader of the Secret Service throughout was Ming. I think historically, he does not get the credit that he is due for why Uzi and that bot lane was so good in 2017 and 2018. I mean, come on, you got to give credit to the guy that is doing the schedule for the president, not just doing the schedule for the president. He's keeping him on time 
in position to pick up all the little bounties, all the little gold that you need to be having to have that six item sivir. Get that damage popping off. That is the key for Mr. Uzi and Ming. Yes, one of the best bot lane duos of all time. And arguably, I think one that is going to be up there for the peak of success when you talk about what we have with these bot lane duos, the power that they peaked at, the dominance that they had throughout that 2018 year for me is almost untouchable by even anybody on this list looking together. And this is our co combination of the best bot lane duos of all time. That should go to tell you just how dominant that 2018 run was for this LPL duo. And we always got to talk about, you know, the big upset that RNG had to G2 at that world championship. And I know people use it as an excuse for RNG losing, but the meta did shift at Worlds. It was two full LPL splits and that MSI run where you play through the bot lane, pump all your resources into the AD carry, and they can carry the game. It shifted a lot at that Worlds, and you saw... Ah, solo laners like Rookie and the Shy, who were able to take over games, and that was the weak spot for RNG. But when they played through the bot lane, they were completely unstoppable, and a lot of that was Ming on Enchanters was absolutely perfect. And playing with a resource-hungry guy like Uzi, how many times did you see Ming say, don't worry, I'll die for you, brother Uzi, so that you may live? <laughs> so, too many times, but it always worked out. It was always paid back in full with the destroyed enemy team Nexus for Ming on the other side. It's it's unfortunate, I think, because as you laid out, the way that things change in 2018, of course, talking about a golden year type of run for this RNG team, for Uzi and Ming, they're able to get it. The only thing in their way is a drastic change in the meta and, of course, a champion like Heimerdinger standing in their way. It's always the last times. hurdle, isn't he? The dong. Uh, of course, just when you least expect him, he's donger is showing up, but that is the way it goes. Uzi and Ming, arguably, even with the Heimerdinger asterisks, still one of the best bot lane duos we have ever seen in League of Legends. And it was basically three years. Anytime you're getting selected to that Asian Games roster as starting bot lane, that's the ultimate recognition that you're doing something right. Ruler and Core JJ also got that honor in 2018. The three, number three bot lane on this list is maybe the most criminally disrespected on this list, and that is the peak dynasty of T1, Bang and Wolf. How many times do you hear the slander towards them? I just got carried by Faker and Marin, and they were just along for the ride. But we know that's revisionist history because for three straight years, okay, two and a half years, they were at worst a top three bot lane and usually in the conversation for best in the world. And I think the, the real answer here a lot of the times is going to be, well, who else would you have? And then someone will throw up one of the other kind of LCK or maybe the LPL bot lane around that time. And then the answer always is, well, yeah, but Bang and Wolf always beat them. It didn't matter no matter what. And it, it doesn't matter to me if you're equating so much of that towards Faker, towards Bangy, towards Marin in the top side, whoever it is. Yes, important contributions. But to just throw away what Bang and Wolf have contributed to this T1 dynasty, outrageous to me. And it is, as you have mentioned before, revisionist history to try and rewrite the script, try to highlight other players more type of thing. Uh-uh, ain't buying that over here at League Unlock. We are talking about Bang and Wolf and the job that they have done. You are looking at two world championships for these guys. Important to keep track of that one through. And yes, some of the biggest plays in T1 history coming from this bot lane duo. And I think because some of the biggest, most notable losses that SKT had, 2015 MSI, Bangs on Urgot not looking great, 2017, he has some Tristana ulties that save some guys and his tournament's a little shaky at times. But if you're only looking at those bodies of work, you're doing a complete disservice to the rest of the career where they were highlight real players and how many times Bang on Lucian were entire comps being built around this guy. Right, that is one of the errors that you got to turn the back of the clock to and see just how dominant, how much of oppression the power and strength could come through from the T1 bottom lane, what they could do. I think the other one is also big on the playmaking and creativity. Remember the, oh, Baker's shockwave catches him. Oh, how do you get that? It's Wolf making the engage on the Rakan, making sure that this is going on and the team is getting it done. 
you cannot be forgetting about the contributions of Bang and Wolf when you when you calculate up the T1 championships. The main rivals to Bang and Wolf in the bot lane during those eras was the catchiest duo name talking about Prairilla in the bot lane and these guys you're talking multiple teams four years pretty much going from 2015 rocks all the way to that 2018 king zone roster they were playing together they were a premier bot lane they were shaping the meta obviously that peaks in that 2016 series against skt where skt's entire draft base had to shift when prey and gorilla were slapping them around with that misfortune support and I think that this is certainly one of the uh, premier duos in history that came through, not only in giving us creative picks in the bot lane, things to shake it up, to get that counter, to do whatever, these type of things. Love that they were able to bust that out. And number two, you look at the mechanical, raw skill of a player like Prey, and you combine that with the communication, the synergy, the playmaking of someone like Gorilla. That was the secret sauce, and absolutely, these two meshed together and they found their success. Unfortunately, not enough at the ultimate high end to really make it without question that these guys could be the top duo of all time in, in retrospect. I think without that type of you know trophy cabinet added up for them, they are leaving themselves open to this group of competitors as well to be in the conversation. I mean, they are the ultimate. There's a lot of teams that you pin up and say, but what if there was an SKT, right? But Rocks and, I mean, Longshoe slash Kingzone, they, credit to the, is due to them. They actually were beating SKT in the LCK. But Prey had that ludicrous stat where like six years in a row, he lost to the eventual champions uh, at the World Championship. So they did it, even though they didn't win Worlds, they didn't win MSI, both Prey and Gorilla still had fantastic international performances. Unbelievable international performances. One of the most iconic plays in world's history of course is praise ash arrow against everything this is really one of the best duos that you could be talking about one of the most iconic throughout history as you've laid out this duo brings back a lot of great memories some painful ones when i'm thinking about how it ended out through in 2017 and the opportunity that was there for them and then you look at it and you go it wasn't the individual misplays in the bottom lane it was other areas that held them back that's the way team play goes in League of Legends, folks. But the key thing with these bot laners and supports is they felt like they were one mind. If you were the very best, they were always on the same page. Even if it's the wrong decision, sometimes Prey and Gorilla were going down in that fire together time and time again, all the way 2015 through to 2018. And that takes us to number one on this list, which you might be thinking are the new kids on the block. But now we're talking about Guma, UC, and Kyria. They've played together three plus years, which is more than a lot of these other bot laners on this list. And multiple times throughout that list, we have talked about them being the best duo on the planet. Blink and you'll miss it. It happened so fast. Three years gone just like that. But yes, Guma and Kyria deserve it at the top of the throne here for the bot lane duos freshly minted with their world championship run with t1 here in 2023 yes gotta be throwing them up at the top of the throne finally the kids are all right and up there at the top it's incredible to look at this run that this young duo has been able to put together of course we've already talked about the already t1 dynasty bot lane in bang and wolf you take those individual skills, you rack them up to another dial, you put the pressure that the League of Legends environment and universe is under right now and where you need to be that top level player, Guma and Kira answering it all the way through. You want some creativity that we talked about with some of these other bot lanes? Kyria alone has got you covered. Not just the Guma picks, Kyria's got you covered with what he's dialing up. This bot lane duo, I can't wait to talk about them more in the years to come. Yeah, and I mean, they're probably only gonna separate even further from the rest of these bot lanes as they continue to get more and more games together. Yeah, the creativity is absolutely there. And how many times, listen, you can call it recency bias, but as the game, League of Legends becomes more complicated and the power level goes up, it only becomes more impressive when there's a clear just skill check gap 
between players on the professional scene and how many times in a 2v2 or in these team fights when T1 are winning fights they have absolutely no business winning, how many times was it plays out of their bot lane that were making it happen? Gumayushi making it happen all the time. You see this crazy play where you're going, oh my God, that's Kyria making something happen with the engage, the playmaking, all these things. Yes, the bot lane duo, such a common answer here coming through from T1 and when they need it the most, they have been there throughout this important 2023 world championship run. Yes, the bot lane duo, their read of the meta and its evolution, major part of why they were able to succeed. And of course you go back to it. Well, do these guys even like playing with each other? Yes, these guys love playing with each other. They have said before many times, I don't care what happens in the future. I don't care what's gonna be up next year, but I'm gonna be playing with this guy. That I can tell you for sure. Imagine, you know, Guma, he played a couple series with, uh, I think it was still effort on the team way back in 2020. But since then, since he's been the bona fide starter, this guy's only played with Kyria as his support for his career. Imagine starting your career with who's probably going to go down as the best support of all time. And it's one of the best things that you look about in the bot lane, right? Having both of these players, you have this incredible mechanical skill in a player like Guma. You have the creativity, you have the willingness to try all these things from Kyria. And that combination of the two of them making each other better is the key thing. I think that is one of those things that they separate themselves as well from these other duos that we do talk about where they've done fantastic things. They've brought the best out of each other too. Yes, that is true. Not to the extent, I think, that Guma and Kyria have been able to do, how much they've been able to push each other to that ultra peak of talent. And we're only scratching the surface with these two at T1 so far. Bang and Wolf, wrongfully, in our opinion, catch flack for getting carried during those dynasties. Well, Guma and Kyria, I don't think anybody has ever been mentioning that. If anything, they have raised the rest of the T1 roster's level to their level because they've been in a different stratosphere for the majority of their years on T1. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for joining us as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.